Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Ill Soy Advisor. I'm Kelsey Litchfield coming to you live from West Central Illinois. It's supposed to be a cloudy day here and maybe get some rain. The weatherman isn't too sure when I looked this morning. Um, but real quick, let's get a quick update on planting progress across the state of Illinois. According to USDA, planting as of April 28th reached 25% for corn with emergence at 6% did see some while I was going to Bloomington the other day. Soybean progress at 26% with the five-year average at 18% and 5% emerged. Winter wheat headed is at 16% with its five-year average at 11%. At 11%. Drought monitor is also being released this morning. And I did see something this morning that when you looked at the drought monitor for the Midwest and the state of Illinois, most areas were still abnormally dry, and then you look at it into May. There's still some areas south and very west, but for most part, it's it's in the clear. But first, my first question, who didn't get rain this past week? Let's start off with that. Crickets. So everyone <laughs> got some form of rain. Does anyone yep. ha have anyone seen any field work or planters going at all, or it's basically non-existent at this point? We we started back last night. You did okay. Yeah, I, yeah, I have customers I had customers that started back yesterday afternoon last night. We had a half inch to five inches, depending upon where you're at. So the half inch guys got started again last night. Yeah, I was gonna say that free port uh, kind of area in my territory. Um, they got going yesterday. Um, they've kind of, a few of those storms kind of skirted past that very northwestern tip of the state, uh, which is good because they, they needed, they need to be able to have some time to keep running. They've been a little bit behind the rest of the state anyway um, with some of the earlier rains that they had. So that part of the territory fired up yesterday. That's going to move a little bit further south. But as you get into the Route 80 corridor, um, just barely south of that, there, it's still, there's still water sitting around that Peoria area and so on. I was to say, I had four and a half inches, and we have lakes and ponds and all kinds of things. But east of Bloomington, I have some guys who are going to spray this afternoon, but they only had about two inches. And then I had another one up by Galesburg that had about two and a half. But we had the heavy rain locally here. So it's going to be a while because today, yesterday was our only day that we actually had sunshine and heat. Today, we're back to cloudy, and that's just not going to get five inches of rain out of the field so i feel like charlie brown with the you know rain cloud over my head walking around <laughs> i'm with karen i'm charlie brown too so yeah I, just what she said we had around three inches um i was able to walk finally i i waited a bit um and walked fields last night and wasn't able to walk entire fields so I can't get to some of my black cutworm traps. <laughs> what did you say? I can't get to some of my black cutworm traps at the college. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mine are in a special place where other people can get to them too, if in case I can't. I just can't because I, it's too muddy. <laughs> oh, yeah. I just saw Shelby jump on. Shelby, do you have any rainfall updates from your area near Champaign? Good morning. Um, we ended up with about 3.2 inches or three and a half inches right here in Flatville. Um, fairly soggy around here. Sounds like everybody else is in the same boat. And um, there's a few guys that think they might be able to try today. I don't I don't know that they'll be able to do anything. I think we'll be able to get some sprayers in some territories, but I don't know that it'll be fit enough to um, plant anywhere. Let's not mess it up and uh, make it Make, make our mistakes now. I mean, it's going to be easy to make mistakes. If it's muddy, you're going to be anxious to go out there and do it, but it's going to be, you know, you're going to create sidewall compaction and other issues that we don't want to lead to, to, to mess this crop up as we head into the season. Thanks, Shelby. Anyone else have anything, a new update, perhaps they haven't mentioned in the past, anything new that's happening out there? I know we're kind of in the same boat as last week with areas of rain and some getting at it, 
some not. So I'm just curious if there's any new updates out there. I do. I'll let Kelly go first. <laughs> We've uh, I've got customers side dressing corn and customers who've never got started planting yet. And uh, we've got the rotary hose. We had the rotary hose running prior to the rain Monday night, Tuesday um, in a lot of places because of the rain that we got the previous Thursday. Um, starting to get a lot of calls on replant on soybeans. Um, most all the the uh, fungicide is on the wheat, but we're starting to see some diseases show up on the flag leaves. So there's some wheat fields that are not looking good at all right now. Uh, and we're starting to see the effects of the freeze. We're starting to see some white heads uh, or partial white heads from the freeze uh, a few weeks ago. So um, uh, it's, uh, we're just, I, I, I say this tongue in cheek, but it's true. I've got a couple of guys. I'm I'm not sure. I got to check on them every day because they are uh, they're not in a very good place right now. They've never got to start, and uh, and like I said, I've got other guys that are done and side dressing corn. So it, it is. Uh, we've got a first class mess on our hands right now. And they haven't started because of the rainfall. Yeah, they're they're uh, I I like I said, I got one customer close to St. Louis. So I got several customers close to the St. Louis area, who I think one of them's got 14 acres planted. Um, I two or three of them maybe have a couple of hundred acres, and some of them have nothing because uh, if you watched it last night, that that came in last night. I mean, it just went right up the Mississippi River, right through St. Louis, and then kind of tried to follow 55 for a while, and and I mean any cloud that comes up follows that same path over there. And um, if you go and look at the 30 day precipitation accumulation, or even the, 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 the seven day accumulation, I mean, they just, they can't miss it. You go to Southeast Illinois, the Ridgeway Gallatin County area. Um, you know, like I said, last night, uh, back in the field yesterday afternoon by three o'clock and, um, and, most of those guys ran late into the night if they could get in the field. So, and a lot of those guys are done, near done, or, or like I said, side dressing corn because of what they planted in March. Thanks, Kelly. Stephanie, you had something? Yeah, and I've been getting a couple reports, and I don't know for sure if it's Southwest Illinois, that the weed is looking good. Um, I got a text and saw something on Twitter. Um, so kind of mixed reports there, Kelly. Yeah, but, um, it's if you're if you're not getting the rain and the humidity that goes with it, you're you're probably in good shape. Yeah. Uh, so we do have um some April eighth, ninth, uh, corn and soybeans up emerged. Um, we are very nervous after that heavy rain. Um, so a lot depends upon, you know, drainage and that. And um, so the corn is a little erratic. I've seen worse. Uh, it's definitely not perfect uh, by any means. Nothing to freak out about. I saw a little erratic corn last year um, in our area, which not a lot of people had. Um, the beans... Uh, I thought he planted too thick. I'm glad he planted thick at this point in time. <laughs> I'm que re-questioning uh, all my population. Uh, uh, you know, like there's just, I hate, I, I don't hate. I, I, I do work with guys when they ask me what population to plant out. But gosh, Mother Nature, just uh, you just never know what she's going to throw at us. And um, it's just hard with early planted beans. Um, I'm getting around 120,000 uh, pop right now. They're still coming. Um, I don't, I think, I'm not positive yet, but I think we're going to have to replant some wet holes. Uh, yeah, especially with beans. I don't want to, I, I don't think I see any kind of, you know, seedling diseases or anything right now. I think it's, it's mostly what I'm seeing is lack of oxygen and, just beans not even coming up yet, and I don't think they are. And they're they're pretty well crested in right now, Kelly. 
um, in those areas. And that's just the par for the course with the tillage thing. Um, so that's what I'm seeing. Um, we really enjoyed the sunshine yesterday and so did the <laughs> crops, right? Uh, like Karen said, so um, we'll keep chugging along. Um, we keep checking traps. No armyworm moths. It seems like they're low and um, and I guess cutworm moths just keep coming in. Um, and I'll let everybody else talk about that if they have any reports. Thanks, Stephanie. Yep, I'll let anyone else chime in. Just keep your reports coming. Um, anything new, we're trying to see what's out there um, that hasn't been yeah, reported so on previously. North, uh, very northeastern corner of Missouri, uh, around Cahoka, Keokuk, Iowa, some of that. And they're a little bit ahead of us. We had a lot of April 10th to 15th planting down there. Um, they received a little bit more rain. They received, they've been receiving around five, between five to six inches of planting. Um, there's been quite a bit of hit through there, and we are starting to see uh, quite a bit of seedling disease, especially in the soybeans. Uh, we're starting to see a lot of damping off, pretty stereotypical uh, lesions forming uh, right on that main stem as they're trying to emerge. And it's just coming from they've just sat in the ground for so long um, and just been pounded by rain after rain after rain. Crusting isn't terrible. There's a lot of more reduced tillage in that area, uh, so that's actually been a, a benefit. Corn. Uh, actually it looks good. It's coming. It's a little erratic in its stand, um, but it's it just is now getting enough GDUs uh, to develop. But I'm afraid they're hopeful. I don't know how, how to how to put it um, as we move. For, for, can you continue to move in Illinois and kind of into that um, uh, kind of Macomb area, some of that, and start moving north? Uh, if we're going to start seeing some of that damping off, kind of kind of flare up there as we start getting a little bit more emergence. Can you tell me again where you were seeing the damping off at? So I was right over, um, right, I was straight west of Burlington, Iowa. Okay, it that's... Was, I mean, every field I could find. Is that possibly the area where they've had pythium issues and resistance kind of area? Or not? I, I, that, I, I, this is, this is kind of my first year working in that area, so I, I, that I, I can't answer. No, that's interesting. Yeah, I've um, several years ago, there was areas into Iowa um, where they were really struggling. They've always really, really struggled with Pythium. Mm. Um, so it'd be interesting to see uh, if you knew for sure. I'm, I, I guess you may not know if it's Pythium or if it's Phytophthora, but that's not yeah. sounding good. Yeah, I know. It, it's going to be, we're going to reevaluate it here in about a week. Um, but just this is a comment, um, you know, for growers uh, that might be listening to this, just to, as you think you're getting some emergence, if you have the, the availability or the time to, to go out and start looking at it. Um, we are starting to see, we do see a little bit of PPO damage as well um, because of the, the lag and emergence. Uh, we're starting to see a little bit of burn right on the back of the cotyledons, some of that, but they're growing pretty well through that. Uh, and the, the unifolias are looking good. So that's not concerning or going to reduce sand. Um, but if you start digging them up and, and seeing, you know, pitting right along that soil, kind of soil contact point um, or just below the soil line, um, that could be some, some cause for concern. You were saying it was planted in April. Is that what you said? April yeah. 8th, 9th, 10th? About, about, about April. Then, a lot of it, I think, was April 15th or so. Okay. And it was treated, I'm assuming. I shouldn't assume. Yeah. Are there any other, as you're doing some scouting, early scouting throughout fields right now, are there any other issues coming up, whether it's with looking at emergence or not, anything that we haven't hit on? Um, one thing we've been seeing prior to this rain, um, and this rain probably saves some guys, is we are seeing a lot of soybeans that are very, very shallow planted. Um, a lot of soybeans laying on top of the ground. Uh, guys are setting the planter, setting the drill um, in the better part of the field and then driving. And um, um, a lot of half inch or less planted beans in some places and on top of the ground. So with this rain, it probably saved them. Um, but uh, they, everybody needs to recalibrate their planting finger to the proper depth um, and, and make, sure that, uh, make sure that we're getting these uh, seeds in the ground at the proper depth when we start. But yeah, the, the the big I think two things 
uh, on the horizon for us down here anyway is going to be the replant. And then um, if we get the rain that's forecast tonight and tomorrow and over the weekend, I think we will start to see some switching away from corn to beans, uh, especially on um, lower the the lower yield potential fields. I th I think that's a real possibility. Um, I don't know. I I'm, you're starting to hear that talk. So I mean, if, if it rains tonight, I mean that puts us into you know the eighth, tenth, getting back into the field in a lot of places. Um, not a very good uh, outlook down here right now. And I think that'll change as you move north, you know, for guys that will have at least, you know, we'll start making those decisions about mid-May um, as you move north. And no one, I, I just wanted to make that clear too. Kelly's in, it's further south. So that just different decisions being made across the state. And I, I guess the other thing is people asking, you know, yield potential, you know, how much longer do I have to plant corn? Um, and I would say, I mean, Kelly, for your area, what would you say? June the 5th. I, I, the best corn was June 5th last year by 100 bushel an acre. So it doesn't matter what day you plant. It's what happens every day after. Mm -hmm. And right now. Some of the stuff that's planted, a lot of guys wish it was still in the bag. I agree with Kelly. We're not going to make any major switches anytime soon. I mean, we've had really good corn late May and early June, and um, we don't encourage you guys to make any changes before at least May 20th. We'll maybe start thinking about it, but I sure hope that we make it back in the field before then. I we could have Dr. Connor Sibyl on here because I think he was almost hinting at you know craziness, but just planting your corn later um, after last year. But I mean, we got to have several years of data, but um, that would be another good topic to to talk about, Kelsey. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to yeah, um, good to know. Up, I've heard I've heard everybody kind of mention around what planter settings and everything, and while planter settings are obviously very important, but um, we need to kind of also be thinking about our tillage and, and how we're setting our tillage implements because I am starting to get some issues where um, some uneven corn emergence and looks like corn is really, you know, maybe deeper than other portions of the field. And I'm kind of leaning towards it with some issues with tillage, um, depending on maybe the style of tillage tool. But, you know, looking at how we're setting those up, I mean, we don't need to sink field cultivators to China like we do rippers in the fall. Um, so, you know, maybe take that into consideration. And the other thing I also like to maybe encourage guys that if we've had, you know, a good tillage pass in the spring and say we do catch a rain and as long as we've got a halfway decent planter, especially the center fill planters, I would encourage growers to maybe consider maybe planting into stale seed beds because I see a lot less issues too. Um, you know, as long as we're not, we don't have muck down there. Um, but you know, I, Personally, I've had good luck of planting in stale seed beds, and I planted in a lot of different fields in a lot, and across the state of Illinois when I was working in research. Mm -hmm. And so that practice worked well for me in those scenarios and stuff. So I just want to, you know, maybe also encourage growers and listeners today that, you know, beyond the planter settings, let's also think about our tillage implements too. And then really evaluate if we do get rained out and we've had tillage done, is really another, you know, another pass of tillage really necessary to continue planting operations. Kelly's way uh, shaking his head at me. I know it's a different story for you down there. Oh, Kelly. I know. Um, it's we we probably. I was going to say we know till there, there's so much stale seed bed again, that goes on. It's not even funny. I've actually, you know, wanted to do some research on that too. Um, we've actually talked to researchers. Actually, I think it was Dr. Margonot. You know, whether or not, you know, wh what what's the implications of that? you know, tillage in the fall, but then also uh, add in, there's guys that are adding the extra pass in spring too. Um, so it's interesting. I mean, I would concur with Eric. We've done that a lot in research because we're just at the, at the whims of the farmer. And so if they're done, you know, it may be wait later before we can get in there and with our seed or, or what have you. And yeah. I've always had good luck with that. So, yeah, I mean, the things that I've seen as a result is that as the ground is firmer, you don't get, you know, the 
the soft and, and hard spots going through the field with a planter, it's a much more even seed bed. It's, for me, I've seen it, it's a lot easier getting a planter set and consistently set across the field. And, and we're not creating those potential air pockets down in the ground either um, by, you know, having loose soil and stuff um, that, you know, when we had a rain, had a chance for that ground to get settled back in. Um, I'm not, and I'm not saying like hard crusted over ground that's turned to concrete by no means, but mm. if it's, you know, if it's still relatively, you know, crumbly or whatever underneath the, the surface, I've had really good lucks and, and more times than not, you avoid a lot of planter type issues. Um, I've seen personally when planting in the stale seed beds. But I, and Eric, I agree with you that, I mean, a lot of what we plant down here is in the stale seed bed a lot of times, especially on soybeans. Um, but what ends up happening in years like this is guys will drag out the vertical, vertical tillage tool oh, yes. to help dry it out, which, uh, I mean, they build interstates with vertical tillage tools. I, the best <laughs> thing you can do with those is yeah. take a torch and cut the tongue out of them because all that does is no mess kidding. your farm up. That's an editorial on my part. So, <laughs> Yeah, that, that's for another discussion another day. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, the, the VT tools will be running hard today to, to dry the ground out, fluff it up so that they can seal uh, where they're planting. And that's that's a recipe for disaster. Yeah. Karen, do you have anything to add? Anything else that you, uh, anything on the weed management side that you're seeing? I know that's been a topic the past couple of weeks, but it seems like they're always popping up. I think I saw Megan Anderson over in Iowa. Um, she had some reports over there too. Yeah, she had some water hemp emerging already. Um, I actually got some calls this week about some fall burndowns that just didn't do anything. So there was a lot of failures with Princep 240, um, but the basis blend seemed to do fairly well. So I'm kind of curious that particular area in those fields have a lot of atrazine use over the years. And I'm wondering with the increased um, microbial degradation of the atrazine, if it also is affecting some of the other chemistry within those families. Yeah, as I'm driving the countryside, and of course, without knowing field history, um, but I'm seeing, you can really tell there's some um, good weed control and some, you know, and I, you know, maybe I uh, haven't read maybe no, none's been done yet. I don't know what's going on, but there's uh, a lot of variation when it comes to uh, fields as you drive across to Illinois right now. I was just going to second um, the, the weeds emerging. I mean, I think everything's fair game now, so I, it's time to throw the kitchen sink at our residual programs. I'm seeing a little bit of everything starting to emerge. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's interesting you say that, Karen, about the failures. Um, We've even seen some of like 2,4-D and glyphosate where, you know, normal and even using a quart of, of 2,4-D and in excess of, you know, probably getting close to some cases, 40 ounces of glyphosate and had some failures, even in some of those scenarios too this spring. Um, I think a lot of it probably the cool conditions and the size of weeds, maybe we didn't have a good idea of what the weeds were at at the time, but yeah, it's interesting to say that. All right. Any last minute thoughts before we close it out? Anything else you want to share? The only, the only thing I will throw in is this, and I've, I've sent this out to my customer base, that a rotary hoe is not a sign of failure. It's just a management tool like a disc, like, a, you know, anything else. OK, uh, I think everybody wants would rather replant than run a rotary hoe. Um, I'd rather run a rotary hoe than replant. And uh, uh, the, the rule of the rotary hoe, if you think you need to rotary hoe, it's too late, okay? You need to be rotary hoeing before you think you need to be doing it. So if you've decided you need to, it's probably too late. So I know rotary hoe is a foreign word to a lot of people. They don't understand that, but it's... Um, it's a crop say I, I have actually have customers that they plant the field, put the rotary hoe on the tractor and park it in the corner of the field because of the soil types and whatnot, whether it's corn or beans, you, you know, even if it doesn't rain, they will hoe because it just gets more oxygen in the soil. So uh, rotary hoe is not a sign of failure. Thank you all. It's been a great conversation today and hopefully the rain quits just enough. Sounds like some are going to try to get back in today, but 
I guess time will tell. I'm looking at that extended forecast, definitely about to rain. And I'm seeing warmer temperatures, but still some cooler nights. Um, so we'll just have to see what comes about with all of that. So thank you all again for joining us today. Um, hopefully you don't have too busy of a day and this kicked started right off and you learned something new. So thanks all.